everybody. Uh, so we're in my uh, my guest bathroom, the, the bathroom that's attached to my home office. Um, I just finished a print and then um, I'm going to kind of walk you through some of my routine of uh, things that I do when I'm done resin printing or, or things that um, things that I wish I knew that make life a lot easier when resin printing. Um, I'm one of those people that I um, consume a lot of uh, edutainment, you know, like I watch a lot of YouTube videos and then I go on like Reddit and stuff like that and look for things that, you know, like things related to whatever I'm doing. So I just have some, some, tr some tips and tricks for you that are gonna help you with, uh, with resin printing. Okay, so first off, um, I've got my bill plate here. And um, when, I, uh, when I got my resin printer, it came with one of these. This is just a, a plastic spatula thing. And then um, it also came with a, uh, a metal one. But uh, if you're going to use the metal ones, I, I recommend upgrading to something like this, which is a bigger, you know, like heavy duty um, spatula type thing. I also have one of these um, silicon <clears throat> splat, splat mats. Um, and then this is just um, silicon, you know, like resin doesn't stick to silicon. Nothing sticks to silicon except for silicon. So I also hang on to little um, plastic containers like these for uh, for spillage. Um, <clears throat> I just, I can't overstate how sticky resin is. So you really just, you need something to kind of control the, um, the spill. So anyways, um, I actually like this uh, plastic one a little bit better. It's a little bit more gentle. Um, I have scratched up my bill plate a little bit you can see a few places, but um, so what I like to do is uh, I set it, set the, the bill plate on its side, right? And then I just kind of, I don't force it. I just kind of, you know, uh, gingerly work with, work the, the prints off the plate instead of shoving them, you know, like gouging into the bill plate with something metal like this. I actually like the plastic one a little bit better. So I, you know, um, I have a Sonic Frozen Mini 4K. Um, basically, I can only fit, you know, a few uh, small prints on the plate. So um, <clears throat> I don't have a big, I do use an, an ultrasonic cleaner. This is just a little um, ultrasonic jewelry cleaner that I got off Amazon. And I think it was like... $20, you know, I mean, I've used this thing for a lot of stuff. It's de definitely got my money's worth out of it, but, um, so I'm going to pop these guys in here. And, uh, I just have, this is just, um, this is just rubbing alcohol. This is full of rubbing alcohol. So the rubbing alcohol, um, you need some kind of de degreaser to get the, the uncured resin off of your prints. This one only goes up to, oh, let's see, 480, yeah. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> I, uh, I left these guys in here for, um, about an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour. And you might be like, oh no, they're ruined. Well, they're not, <laughs> but check this out. So the supports just like peel off. Um, and, um, so I've tried this, you know, um, I've tried this with, I did this by accident. I, um, I had some prints going, um, and, uh, <clears throat> I needed to just come back to it. So I, I popped them in the, the cleaner and ended up leaving them in there for a while. And... <clears throat> it's, uh, the model does have some give to it, 
so you can see that like this uh this resin it's sort of it's sort of like an abs like resin um but it's um i've tried this at where i you know immediately took them out and then took them off the supports and then i've tried it like this where i've left them in there for a while and um all that sitting in there does is just make the support soften up. So, you know, the supports are designed, they're like very, um, very thin, or the, the connections are very uh, flimsy. So they're designed to just break right off of the model. Um, and then this is, this is actually, this was a, a free model that I downloaded off of, um, <clears throat> my mini factory and then these are just chudu boxes auto supports with the uh with the model just align um set like pretty much flat on the build plate and uh so yeah i mean sometimes you know like the i've heard from people that are like pros where they say that they that's how they do it when the miniature has a base like this when it actually has a flat base they put it flat and then they do the supports around it. So, but obviously if you're doing auto supports, you can get them in places where you don't want them. I mean, there's, you know, or have supports sticking to places where you don't want them. But uh, because they're designed to break away, you know, the, the model comes out looking pretty clean and great. Um, so I'm gonna take these off to, uh, to cure. But before I do that, um, <clears throat> I wanted to show you, I do hang on to these sometimes for cleaning the resin, the, the vat, the resin vat, but, uh, I wanted to show you about this. So you can reclaim, this is really dirty. This, uh, this IPA, it's really dirty. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and filter it. So the way that I like to do this is I take a, um, well, this is just a, this is just an old um, <clears throat> a trail mix container, but it's, you know, it has clear plastic on one side. So what I do is I take a paper towel and fold it over a couple of times. And then uh, I, uh, I dump everything into um, into there and um, what what uh, what this is is um, this is just a, a screen and then this is meant for to go into a uh, a sink you know into a drain um, to catch um, you know stuff that's in the sink but it was like 99 cents at Walmart. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and dump out, dump all of this um, IPA through this um, paper towel and let it filter out a little bit. And then I'm going to put it into the windowsill. And you can see that it's already doing a little bit of filtering. Like this is uh, clearer than this. But um, this is one way that you can reclaim your IPA and then keep using it even when it's really dirty. So I'm just gonna let this do, do its thing and kind of filter while I'm uh, taking these over to cure. Okay, the, uh, the curing station. <laughs> so I have, um, I originally got this one. This is a, um, you know, they do sell like big, resin like washing and curing stations where it has like a gallon container of like IPA you know or you put um you fill it up with rubbing alcohol and then it has a little turbine in there that spins and then it cleans your prints and then uh and then it, and then you take the uh you take the the that container out and then it has a little turntable that goes around that has like a magnet in it and then it has lights on all sides that cure. <laughs> but I thought that was overkill for what I was doing. 
So I got this one first, and then this is just, you know, for like fingernails, for, um, for doing, uh, you know, they, they have these in the nail salon. And this is just a, a UV light, and then it has um, different uh, little timer functions on the top. And then that, like, that is good enough for most of what I do, um, which is, you know, minis. So, <clears throat> but I went ahead and I got this, and this is an upgrade for me. So this is a, a UV light. Uh, I'm not going to shine into the camera. But this is a, a UV light, and then it has a, um, you know, a little switch on it. And then this is just a stand that came with the kit. And then um, it also came with this little turntable. And then the turntable is solar powered. So, um, let's see if I can get this out of here. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> this turntable will just turn as long as the sun is out. And then that is one way that you can cure your resin prints is by, um, you know, just leaving them out in the sun, but then this turns them so that they automatically get uh, get cured. So all of these models, um, this is the same two prints. Um, all of them, can I get you back in here? Um, I printed all of these like in the last, I don't know, 24 hours or whatever. And uh, I tried different, um, different amounts of, um, leaving them in the IPA to kind of get soft. So I can't tell the difference now. All of them are cured and hardened and none of them are like really, well, maybe a little bit. Or let me find two of the same, the same model. Uh, none of them really have too much of, um, extra flex, you know, from being left in the IPA to get the supports soft or they're, they aren't like missing any details or, you know, they all look the same. And I tried different, like immediately pulling them out of the, uh, the IPA and taking the supports off up to like leaving them in there for, you know, over an hour. Um, and, uh, so yeah, but the th okay. So the thing that I like about this too, just one more thing about this, is that um, I can uh, I can put it on the side and then turn it on, and then I know that pretty much every little nook and cranny of that model is going to get some UV, and then it's going to get cured. But I mean, just leaving it in the windowsill with the um, with the sun out is enough to, uh, to cure these guys. Like that, that's gonna get them um, hard enough to where they're like, you know, ABS type plastic, like uh, your, um, you know, uh, game store plastic. So I'm gonna take these guys out. These are the ones that, j that I just finished printing. And then I'm gonna put them on here so, since they need the most, uh, they need the most time. So I'm gonna take these guys out and spray paint them. And I do think that spray painting is the best way to prime these because it sticks to the resin really, really well. Okay, and finally, um, what do you, why do I keep the supports? I'll show you. <laughs> um, so, what I, what I can do with my, if I want to clean out my, um, my resin vat, right? What I can do is I can take a, a nice, you know, chunky support like this, get some of the dog hair out of there. Um, and then I can plop it down into the resin so that it's on the, uh, the tray. And then I can uh, do the, um, the vat cleaning And then it will go ahead and it will um, cure that, um, you know, that, that bottom 
layer on the tray or on the vat. So if there's anything, anything that failed, you know, in the, um, oh, it didn't cure. The whole thing didn't cure. Uh oh. Um, so that's okay. <laughs> that's a fail. But, um, if it had done it the way that it was supposed to, then this would have stuck to that bottom layer that's in the, um, the bottom of the, uh, the resin tray. So I do have a, another trick, another trick for, um, cleaning the resin vat though, that I will show you. Okay, so I, uh, I dumped all the resin back in here, and then this is, uh, safe, whoops, safe to, uh, keep the resin in, you know, if I'm done printing for a while. Um, so what I have here is this is, um, the, uh, the filtered used IPA, and then, um, I've got my, uh, this is the, the cured layer of resin, you know, on the bill plate. So I need to get that up, right? So what this is, is, um, this is just a half and half, um, ammonia free glass cleaner and rubbing alcohol. So I'm just going to kind of spray some of that in there. And then, um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to like pry at anything on this side. I want to just kind of like roll the, uh, roll it off from the back side. And I'm just kind of using like the, uh, the back side of my hand to just press it, press it up. Um, I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to like, uh, pull it up. I just want to pop it off. <laughs> so actually, I think I'm going to put a little more rubbing alcohol in here because like the rubbing alcohol softens everything up. But I've gotten pretty good about, uh, conserving and then reclaiming, uh, rubbing alcohol. Okay, so you can see I kind of let it soak in there for a little bit and then it's ready to uh, to come up. So the other thing that I like to do too when I'm cleaning, cleaning stuff, um, whether that's like the bill plate or the uh, the resin vat is I like to use these little alcohol prep pads and then these are for like cleaning wounds or like if you're going to do an injection or something then you use this to like clean the um clean the area but they're um they're like a microfiber you know they're they don't have um any uh they, they don't have anything that'll scratch up the the FEP film so they're kind of perfect for doing this and then you know they already have some alcohol in them so and then just you know alcohol rubbing alcohol it's just it's just the best thing for cleaning up resin just you know it just works better than everything else so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to leave that uh for now i'm going to put it on its side and just let it kind of drain out so if these would have cured in there then i could have just peeled up that that big chunk of resin from the bottom of the tray. But this is my like gray water um, isopropyl alcohol. So I'm gonna save that because I can filter this and leave it out in the sun to cure. Okay, so since I'm acting like I'm gonna put this up, um, cleaning this up to like get it ready to put away, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go through the motions of I'm probably just going to put this back to work printing again, but, um, so the, the Windex or yeah, glass cleaner plus rubbing alcohol does a little bit better job of getting rid of the streakies. 
um, so that you just get that nice clean FEP plate, um, FEP sheet. So yeah, like I like to use the, the combination of, you know, a half and half Windex and rubbing alcohol and then a little alcohol prep pad to, uh, you know, just getting all those old nooks and crannies and then get everything nice and clean and streak free. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about reclaiming IPA. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and, you know, cleaned these in the, in the uh, cleaner, the Joy Cleaner. And then um, you can see that this, this IPA is just, uh, is pretty gross. So I need to change this out. Okay, so I went ahead and um, dumped all of this out into my little filter. And uh, that's kind of doing its thing. But I already went through a couple of these. And uh, there's a lot of uh, resin that's in these. That's, um, you know, it did filter out a lot of, a lot of resin. So what I can do is leave these out in the sun, you know, to dry, and then they will become inert. And then it's safe for uh, the baby ducks and all that, you know? So what I'm gonna do now though, is I'm gonna take my uh, gray water um, IPA, and then I'm gonna refill this. So I can take, um, you know, I can get like multiple, multiple uses out of the, uh, the IPA. It doesn't all just have to go down the drain or whatever. Um, you can get multiple uses out of it. So I'm gonna let this kind of do its, do its thing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the windowsill so that the, um, the over time, this resin will cure in the light and then it will sink to the bottom. And then I can do the same thing. I can, you know, uh, pour it back through another filter again, and it will turn it back into gray water IPA that I can use to uh, clean uh, prints with. So, so yeah, I will show you that in a minute. Okay, so I um, I left this um, just for you know less than a day. It's been curing for um, for a little while. But you can see how the resin is starting to, um, like I'm, I'm leaving it out in the sun. You can see how it's starting to kind of cure. And then uh, it turns into this um, like goopy jello kind of stuff. But you can filter that out and then you can um, take the IPA out of there and then reuse it as your uh, like gray water IPA to put in like the ultrasonic cleaner or, you know, whatever. So, but it's only, you can see that there's some like fully cured resin down here. And then this stuff is starting to cure out and eventually it will just settle to the bottom. So anyways, I'm just gonna leave this stuff in the sun and let it do its thing. And uh, I hope that, uh, I hope that some of that was good information for you guys. All right, take care, I'll see you in the next one.